A short time after, the hijack opens up with 10-8 suited. The cutoff calls with queen-jack offsuit. He's the player who I just shown the full house to. I pick up jack-8 of hearts, and I prefer to 3-bet rather than call here usually, but I've been 3-betting a lot. I'm in position. My hand has a decent amount of potential, and we're pretty deep, so I just flat. Andrew comes along as well. We go four ways to the flop. What do you think is going to win? Uh, I'm going to go with Brad Owen. No, I'm going to no, go with Snuggie. I, I would go with Snuggie if, <laughs> if I were... Hold on, I take Snuggie. <laughs> Mark's mom I mean, Brad does have the backdoor flush draw. He's got an open ender for the chop. Snuggie flops a straight, and it's checked to him. He bets 50. I've seen Snuggie play an extremely wide pre-flop range. I've also seen him make bluff attempts and multi-way pots. There's nothing in this hand so far that necessarily indicates he's super strong. I've got an open ender with a backdoor flush draw. I go for the raise to 160, hoping that I can take it down right away, but if not, I'm building a bigger pot in case I do hit my hand. Little do I know that I can't even win outright if I do make a straight. Also, it's worth noting at this time that I'd play queen jack, pocket tens, pocket nines, king ten, king nine, and ten nine the same way up to this point, so I'll have a ton of value raises in my range. Too bad for me, I'm up against the nuts because I raise here and... This That's not, not going to work, work out. out. <laughs> That's not, it's not going to go well for Brad. No, Batiste's going to have an easy fold. Do you think Snuggy can find a just call here, or do you think he's going to feel obligated to raise? I think it's very reasonable for yeah, him to raise, and I expect just to him meet to raise. That Mark knew. I get stared down for a long time by 10-8 suited. Batiste looks like Brad must like just killed his family, yeah. and he's like, finally <laughs> found him. <laughs> It's like the end of The Revenant. Yeah, it's like, I finally got you, buddy. You're cornered. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, now you will face my wrath. Eventually, Baptiste does lay his hand down. The action is back on Snuggie with a straight. He just flats, which is surprising to me. I don't expect him to do this with a strong, but very vulnerable hand out of position, since there are a lot of cards that could either kill the action for him or potentially pair the board and make the hand much more difficult for him to play. I don't think he'll do this with a straight or set. I mainly put him on two pair hands, one pair hands with gut shot straight draws, or potentially just a gutter with an overcard like ace queen or ace jack. The turn is the ace of hearts, gives me the flush draw, my equity jumps from 10% to 22%, so it's a great card for me. Snuggy now leads for 210. It's less than a half pot size bet, and it's somewhat confusing to me. Seems like a blocker bet, I feel like I'm still up against ace queen, ace jack, king queen, king jack, king 10, or 10-9. I contemplate raising because I can still have the nuts in my range and I feel it's unlikely that my opponent is going to have one himself. I'm getting a great price and I have implied odds working for me too though, so I just call, hoping for a heart now. I don't get any help. The river is another 9. That does pair the board, so it's slightly frightening for Snuggy, but he's going to lead anyway. I like betting again. Snuggy bets 335. Not much I can do here. I've got nothing. I can only fold. And that's what I do. I fold. I fold, right? Well, Snuggy bet 38% a pot. I get the sense that he's afraid of something. I don't think he'll necessarily show up with a boat or a straight very often here. Me, on the other hand, I could certainly play full houses like this and on rare occasions, even Queen Jack. The last hand I played with Snuggy, I showed him that I raised him on the turn with a boat. That should have gotten me a lot of credit. He thought I was a nit before that, so... I feel like it's a good time to cash in on my image. I pull the trigger and raise to 1100. Even if I do get called, I can't imagine a better situation to get caught bluffing. This opponent plays every hand that he can and he's on my direct right. I'll have plenty of opportunities to get my money back from him if it does go poorly. And as you can imagine, Snuggy snap calls. Did he fold? I don't know. No, it looks like it was a call. No, he oh. folded. Oh. Snuggy oh. folded. Just kidding. He snap folds face up. I can't bluff a player like this without showing him. I turn over the hand, hoping that it'll go off the rails a little. He takes it well at first, but his play definitely loosens up even more than it was before. We're in a great position to win lots of money. Why Brad Owen pulling the trigger there? That was strong. It was very strong. In this hand, we find ourselves in a similar pre-flop situation that we were in earlier. Wonka raises, but this time from early position with pocket tens, so he's got a strong hand. Baptiste calls with pocket sixes. Snuggy calls with 8-5 offsuit. I pick up ace-4 diamonds. I want to get involved. And Brad Owen ain't going to fold either. Looks, that, that's like kind of the pause you always see before a 3-button. There it is. 200. I like the sizing a lot. Owen's size is big in his 3-bets, and I like it too. He uh, he gives himself real full deck, but he did this with kings as well as with uh, king-queen before. So he went with his ace-4 suited, so he's got real consistency to his sizing. 
it makes it tough. I mean, Wonka can't full tens, but he already can't like his situation. It's a weird, it's going to be a weird stack to power ratio thing already. He is folding. Wow. Well, wow. that means I got to believe everyone's going to fold now, right? He did open under the gun and Owen decided to three bet anyway. And Owen has been getting his three bets through. If Wonka had seen some of the three bets or if he had yeah. seen the four bet that Owen did against him. And yeah. Baptiste calls with the two sixes, by the way. I get the best hand to fold, but Baptiste does make the call with the sixes. I put him on a hand like the one that he's got. I expect him to have low to medium sized pocket pairs a ton of the time here. When the board comes 754, I'm not too pleased because it's a board that's much better for his calling range than it is for my three bet range. There are no high cards on the board, so my range is mainly going to only consist of one pair of hands at best. Baptiste checks. My hand has value. I'm ahead of all ace and king highs. I also have a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw that wouldn't be any good. I check because I don't think I'll be able to get any hands that are beating me to lay it down. Oh, that's a bad card for Batiste. Not only because Owen improves his equity, but also because Owen has a bunch of ace king in his range. Yep. Owen's definitely going to continue here, and Batiste, I don't think, can fold with the open ender and the pair. I think that would be a bad play. I no, don't he's, him to fold. he's getting three to one also. But Owen can. Oh, no, it's way. Uh, it says 125 is 225. Yeah. There's the call. Not a surprise, but Batiste is not going to like another barrel on the river, which I gotta believe is coming a lot. Well, Whoa. it's definitely coming now because Owen, Owen improves to what is almost always the best hand. We get a great run out, not only for our actual hand, but also for our perceived range. And Baptiste knows that kings and aces are not good for him once I three bet and check back the flop. He checks river with two pair. I'm certainly going to bet though. I don't anticipate getting called that often. I make it 500. Baptiste lets it go quickly. It's not a huge pot, but our stack is steadily increasing and we're up 1500 on the night. Next we pick up queen 10 of hearts in the cutoff. The under the gun player blind raises at 25. I raise to 70. The under the gun player calls with pocket eights and we get a great flop. It's queen five deuce with two hearts. We've got top pair and a flush draw to go with it. The opponent checks. I put out a small bet of 55. This induces a bluff from Kevin who's been very active since he came into the game late. He makes it 125. I call for 70 more and the turn is a six. Now the player checks, so I figure I probably have the best hand, but if not, I should have plenty of outs. I bet 200, then Kevin calls pretty quickly. Uh, I wonder if Brad thinks he's ahead or behind now. He knows he has a ton of equity, but yeah. I wonder if he thinks he's currently ahead. When Kevin checks so quickly on the turn, he may think he is ahead. I think we're just gonna see check check though. Uh, but I could go for some thin value against a guy who likes to call. Kevin checks the river and I'm on the fence about what I should do. That's when I get what I perceive to be a live tell. It's very tough to hear since there's commentary over it, but if you listen closely, you'll hear Kevin say, I got you beat. I'm going to play it again. I think we're just going to see check check though. Uh, but I could go for some thin value against you. a guy who likes the call. You may notice the player in between Andrew and I hears it, and he reacts by swiveling his head to see what I'll do. I feel like the opponent is trying to induce a check from me because he probably has a marginal hand that has some value and wants to get the showdown for free. That verbal tell pushes me over the edge and gives me the confidence to go for thin value on the river. He's seen. Oh, he's, he's, he's doing it. He has. This is nice. He's seen I Kevin call. call really light before. Bam, and he gets oh, snap call. That was nice by Brad. Well played. Shows the eights. He knew to go to, for value on the turn and river after getting check raised. It's so, maybe he thought like the six was a show, was a card that uh, turned a hard card into a downable hand or something like that for Kevin, because I don't know how he thinks he could get value. What he's supposed to get called by that check raise him on the flop, except things that turned into value on the turn, right? So unfair. Yeah, that was really good. A lot of people are going to check at least one of those two streets. Yeah.